This is Father Gregory Pine. This is Father Patrick Briscoe. This is Father Joseph Anthony Cress. This is Father Jacob Bertrand Jancic. And this is Father Bonaventure Chapman. <sighs> and welcome to God's Playing. Thanks to all those who support us. If you enjoy the show, please consider making a monthly donation on Patreon. Be sure to like and subscribe to God's Planning wherever you listen to your podcasts. All right, last, uh, not last, Speaking but last, last of episode. podcasts. Ah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Seamless transition. There it Don't is. jump the, the gun for today. Well, I mean, guns are meant to be jumped, aren't they? Or <laughs> discharged, or never mind. Guns are meant for all kinds of things, it seems. Concealed. I, P.S. I just read my last Agatha Christie novel. That is to say, I read all of the Agatha Christie novels and short oh, stories wow. because I'm, I'm a them. weird monster of completion and I need <laughs> a better way by which to channel my energy. Cert um, certificate coming to you, my friend. Thank you. I have received a certificate in criminology, a Norris Cowser for the <laughs> <Godspending> podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we're just dishing uh, those things out nowadays aren't we we are yep oh, we, they come thick is. and fast we, 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 we oh, literally like give note, them out not. like paper <laughs> <laughs> like sticky notes or post-it notes or whatever the appropriate name for that is 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 post-it is that the is that the company is like calling a tissue kleenex yeah or like yeah. a hoover like when you're hoovering yeah. Good yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as everyone says, everyone's favorite verb, especially if you're from North Canton, Ohio, go wash. Um, so we, we thought that in this episode, we might talk about podcasts, not in like the fun slash meta fun way of talking about ourselves, for I know not how much fun is to be experienced in such a pursuit, but rather talking about other podcasts. Because um, as much as you might think that we spend all of our free time listening to God's planning so as to regale ourselves with our own jokes, we don't. Um, or at least not all of us do, just Father Bonaventure, just to get further material for metanarratival commentary on future episodes. Yeah, that's why um, we call him Father Potaventure. <laughs> Ooh, back at it. Exactly. Back at it. I listen to podcasts less than probably all of you do, but we'll see. Nice. We'll nice. See. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Father J. <Jay> <laughs> You, you perhaps have seen the shelf on my DHS office with its zero books. You happen to have books here on my, my home office. But that's like um, I, I claim to be illiterate in that setting. So, so mm -hmm. too, Father mm -hmm. Jacob Bertrand has ear shelves empty of podcasts. That's a terrible metaphor. I'll move on. Okay, so, um, <laughs> so, so thinking about podcasts right or talking about podcasts or just getting into podcasts. Um, w w what place do a, do podcasts occupy in your life? Yeah, ear shelves. Thanks, Father Bonaventure. Um, Father Patrick, are you a podcast man? Are you kind of like for or against? Are you like I only produce, I don't consume, or do you do you dabble? Yeah, so I'm gonna stake out the other end of this spectrum among nice. the Godsplainers because I am basically always listening to podcasts. Okay, is that nice. is that like an nice. OSV news? Have your ear to the ground so as to pick up you know, the stagecoach rider as he approaches, that kind of thing? Yeah, that's definitely part of it. I'm always looking for, some, you know, I got to throw stuff in a column every week for the paper and write about stuff. So, so I, do, I have to be looking for it. So I, I do I do actually have a legitimate reason to know what people are saying. But but some of what I listen to is not news oriented. You know, it's more, um, more. I mean, some, some things are more like professional development. Like I like At the Table with uh, Patrick Lencioni. I think that's a great podcast. But um, I also like... Um, I also like more entertaining things like Crime Town or the History of Rome. I've been kind of plugging my way through. Mm -hmm. So I listen on my walks in the morning. Got to get my steps in. And <laughs> oh, yeah. I listen as I'm puttering about my room. Often as I'm you know, kind of going over things and editing, I'm listening. Yeah, I'm, ba I'm basically like listening to podcasts all day. Just to communicate a spiritual atmosphere to our listeners, when you say getting your steps in, uh, at the end of the day, your uh, Apple health tracker We'll, we'll, we'll recount to you how many steps you've taken. What are you usually, you hitting like an 8,000, like a 10,000? Where are you at these days? Yeah, usually I'm at like eight, you know, the goal being 10. But like right. if this is a confessional mm. setting and I have to tell you what's up, you know, we're right about eight. Yeah, shoot for the moon. The worst that will happen is you go hurtling into space and die of asphyxiation. That's a lot <laughs> of trips to the rec room. And back. Wow, that got That's, dark. <laughs> dude, I Oof. got you. I got you. Oof. Just for listeners to know. <clears throat> Um, F Father Joseph Anthony, do podcasts mm -hmm. occupy a place in your life? If so, are they? Uh, do they have a place at the table, or are they kind mm -hmm. of condemned to the outer darkness? Um, I'm I'm probably in the middle ground of everybody. I I I find myself I I'm more of a 
content creator with respect to this uh, space than a consumer. But um, yeah, I, I listen to podcasts. I find that I listen to podcasts when I drive a lot. So if I'm mm. driving up and back from DC or something like that, uh, it's helpful to just throw a, pod, a few podcasts and truck out a few episodes um, in that setting. So I find that's going to be where I listen to podcasts mostly. And it's a mixture of entertainment podcasts and uh, kind of professional development stuff. So um, yeah, I, I would say I'm somewhere in the middle of it. It's not, there's not like a list of podcasts that I, you know, I'm always listening to. It's not like Thursday is my podcast day or mm -hmm. anything like that. But I do find that I, I will tend to listening to podcasts as I'm driving. And the way that things are set up here in Charlottesville, the Priory is right across the street from the church. So my commute is 30 seconds at mm -hmm. maybe 45 on a rough day mm -hmm. when, uh, you know, traffic is heavy. But um, when I am in the car, you know, driving a decent distance, that's when I'll uh, make my way over to the podcast side of things. Now, F Father Jacob Bertrand, it's been whispered abroad that you don't listen to podcasts, uh, that your ear shelves are utterly <laughs> empty when it comes to the stockage, the stockage, the, how do you pronounce that word, of podcast material. Is that true or is that a slanderous lie? Mm. Um, it's not It's not, not true. <laughs> okay. two, I listen to one podcast with some regularity, but it's a sporting, a sportif po podcast, mm -hmm. so it's not really like... Pod, you know what I mean? It's like that. Yeah, so, yeah. and then there's one uh, like long form comedy. Well, it's like interview podcast that I occasionally listen to, um, but that's it. So, I think it's like what, as far as listeners go on this, Father Patrick listens. Then I guess probably Father Joseph Anthony. Then probably you, Father Gregory. Yeah. Then probably me, and then probably Father Father Bonaventure. I think that would be. The order that's that's the spectrum that is our spectral life um although father bonaventure you you're like a, a paradoxical case insofar as you take every opportunity to volunteer yourself off the island uh to use mixed <laughs> metaphors based on the program survivor so like folks listening at home whenever we do like a little straw poll it's like hey folks do you want to do five episodes for this batch or six father bonaventure always responds zero uh, but then we hold him to his word, which yes. word was never clearly formulated and never promulgated. But nevertheless, he has some vague sense that the word was given. And as a result of which it is laid claim to. But uh, so you're not you're like not a content creator insofar as you do this unwillingly under duress at gunpoint. That's the second mention of gun. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, you you actually like listening to podcasts a little bit, at least particularly interesting podcasts. Uh, Talk to us yeah. about your podcast life. Oh, okay. Um, well, let's be, I mean, I'm music things like, so Emmanuel Kant, here he is. Um, yeah. <laughs> so get this. This guy listened. Oh, he's stuck magnet. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> um, so this guy listened to his favorite piece of music, I think, three times in his entire life. Okay. So I try to set, like, my my kind of listening to things based upon that. So the idea of like listening to music when you're driving a lot, it's kind of thing. Like I like a lot of silence in the room. I'm never listening to music in the cell and that sort of thing, because like it, it just seems to cheapen it or something. Podcasts are different. Um, although I, I, so I do listen to a few of them. It's on mainly long drives though. Like father, just Anthony, it seems like the right thing to do, um, to do something in there. If you're not gonna listen to music entirely uh, and let it, you know, lest it, uh, yeah, diminish your, love of that particular piece um so now i do listen to a few there are two podcasts i probably stay are we doing the pot are we doing names yet or are we doing you can do whatever you listening? want this 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 episode has no structure it's just a free-for-all oh. yeah um oh i've ever ever want i want to point out quick um the hegelian reference that uh, father jacob burton made so he said i'm not i don't not i i don't not listen to podcasts which is double negation um no that's cool because it's not a double negation you'd think like negative negative five is just back to five but father jacob Burton is refusing to acknowledge that it's the same as just saying yes so double negating something is a higher form of the original thing but it's not the same thing as original so it's a hegelian dialectic so that's a really cool logical point that's so cool um, it is <laughs> um but yeah i listened to um I listened to let's see what podcast you listen to. i hey, so you, philosophy you ex explain it again no i won't <laughs> 
You missed class. Um, uh, He's not getting his certificate. Yeah, Yeah. no certificates are given here. Yeah. Um, So I listen to philosophy podcasts sometimes, and there are, folks. There are just pure philosophy podcasts. And there's one called um, Parker's Parker's Pensees. It's actually named after uh, Pascal's Pensees, but it's intentionally mispronounced because the the um, the host is a is an analytic philosopher, so he's a logic chopper who doesn't read other languages, and so he intends. It's like a kind of a, a an attack. On, it's kind of a, a yeah joke on himself. Um, so it's Parker's Pensees, even though it's it's not supposed to be pronounced that way. And he has some pretty cool guests on there, and that's a great uh, podcast for just straight philosophy uh, with a Christian angle on it. And she's really great. And some of our guests are actually on there. Uh, Professor Tom Ward has been on there, um, hmm. so that's that's a cool show. So I listen to. So that's like academic-ish podcast, I would say. Nice. Okay. Um, uh, as to the divulging of my own podcast listening frequency, I um, I prefer audiobooks to podcasts. I don't know exactly why. I think it's because podcasts are kind of ungovernable and unconquerable. And in order to prop up my weak little will, I need to like dominate intelligible universes, even if those universes are like the novels of Agatha Christie. Um, and I find that audiobooks are easier to compass than podcasts because mm. they keep going and they often produce at a rate that I'm not able to keep up with. Like the Thomistic Institute podcast, by the way, which is just churning out content like it's going out of style. Um, is that an advertisement? I don't know. Hard to say. Uh, but I like – so something that I like to play with is I mean, languages. And Father Dominic a bill for that. that yeah, was exactly. at least That was worth at least $200. Yeah, perfect. Okay, yeah. Cha-ching, cha-ching. Uh, and we will – uh, dedicate that money to our certificate program, folks. So know that we will retain our 501c3 uh, nonprofit status as an educational institution of the utmost repute. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I do like tinkering with languages. I'm not especially good at language acquisition, but I like like listening to language and trying to speak languages. And so I do 15 minutes a day of you know languages. And so right now the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the podcasts that I listen to are in large part dictated by what people have loaded onto this language service called Link, L-I-N-G-Q dot com. Um, and so people load up podcasts onto it and then they have transcripts and then you can make flashcards and then you can study and it's great. So I'm listening to a, a Spanish podcast called Espanol con Juan, which is just this dude talking about whatever strikes his fancy in Spanish. And then <laughs> the, the podcast that I'm listening to to work on Italian is called Impact Girl, uh, which is an Italian language podcast entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> oh Your God. vocabulary is going to be really <laughs> sweet for that pastoral application of Italian. Oh, I was it's just say, that is going to be That's such amazing preaching. <laughs> amazing. Your Italian oh, preach. Imprenditori feminali. Um, so I got that. Pastor practices. Exactly. So let's just say I'm not especially discerning when it comes to the choice of podcasts, but I like it because it's a matter of working on languages, which I think transitions us into the point like, what what do we what do we go to podcasts for? Like, what do we go yeah, yeah. looking for? Because yeah. like, I, I imagine that some people come to God's blending to learn about the faith um, and to deepen their life of prayer. That's the hope. Um, but also like it's fun to take part in a conversation mm-hmm. or it's fun to kind of break up the day or it's fun to diversify a long drive. But like, what, what do we come to podcasts looking for? And maybe what should we come to podcasts looking for? I don't know. Father Jacob Bertrand, do you have a first thought on that? Yeah, I guess I think in general, I don't know. I For me, I, I, I think there are probably different answers. Like it could be educational, spiritual. But for me, it's sort of an entertainment value, um, which doesn't have to. Yeah, it's not the only it's not the the only reason to listen to a podcast, but um that that's kind of where it registers for me. So I think that's why I often don't listen to like podcasts generally because I'm not usually entertained by them or the ones that <laughs> fall into like entertainment, like, or because not because they're bad, but because I would prefer like, rather than listening to a podcast, I'd rather like watch a movie, for example, for like sort of um, that kind of so entertainment. So you can fall asleep. So, okay, let's, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have this. <laughs> I have this problem. So I'd rather go to sleep than listen to a podcast, which is, yeah, yeah. I, I barely make it through 10 minutes of a movie generally before I pass out. So that's fair. Um, but yeah, for me, it's, I, I know a lot of people listen for like, like you were saying, Father Gregory, spiritual enrichment or educational kind of things or that's blah, blah, blah. Fine. Great. I think those are all valid and good for my own personal taste. It's an entertainment thing. And if it's not kind of checking that box, then I'd rather 
not listen, get my work done, kind of be free for a later time to kind of have some leisure. Um, but I real again, I realize that's a that's a me interpretation of what podcasts are for sure. Yeah, maybe maybe um, Father Patrick, uh, what are, what are some of the risks with podcasts? Obviously, you know you're living on the news cycle, and so there's a kind of hustle, there's a kind of flow, but there can be a an effervescent. No, that's not the word I'm looking for. An ephemerality, a transience to all of that. Mm-hmm. Insofar as like mm-hmm. you know what happened in the news a week ago doesn't necessarily matter this week, at least as it concerns the workaday world. And I think like podcasts, maybe they, they pose a similar risk insofar as they direct our attention where it perhaps ought not be directed or needn't be directed. What do you see as to like risks of podcast consumption? I think that's right. Um, you know, and you, you, you laid it out right there, you know, the basic, basic premise of the argument, which is that you could get too caught up in what's going on in the world and it doesn't actually help you in the demands of your life. I mean, this is the same thing that happens to people who are addicted to cable news or, um, or to any other kind of uh, entertainment that draws them away from mm-hmm. the demands of their life, right? So, so the ba- so the balance to be had is to be found by examining whether or not one is really faithful to one's state in life, one is faithful to one's vocation, and whether or not something is disturbing your peace. If you if you're listening to, uh, you know, a news podcast and you find that you're always angry. Uh, maybe you don't actually need to listen <laughs> to that news podcast. Maybe it's affecting yeah. you in a in a way that you need to liberate yourself from. Uh, so t- so turn it off, um, uh, or not just turn off a podcast, but better yet, replace it with something, um, you know, like God's finding that's going to help you think about eternal things, about higher things, <laughs> about uh, the greatest things to be had in this life until such time as we're called home to God, which sounds like a phrase Father Gregory would say. I was thinking the same thing. Uh, mm. So I think that uh, I, I think that we certainly should be critical about the kinds of thing we're listening to, <clears throat> how much time we spend listening, uh, who we spend listening to. Uh, I mean, yeah. these are all these are all good um, good assessments for the media we consume in general. Being being mindful of all of this. Yeah, uh, Father Joseph Anthony, your thoughts when you talk to your students and they're uh, just like little content consumption monsters. What do totally. you counsel them, or how do you counsel them? Um. I, I think the risks of pro- podcasts in that sense is that we always have to have some noise going on. So if you're walking across grounds or going from one thing to the next, you have to fill that space with um, with something. And podcasts are attractive because it can be substantial. Like you can learn more, whether that's about history or philosophy or you know the faith. And you're like, oh, this is good content so it's okay and it's actually you know laudable to be listening as i go in between things and stuff like that but i do think it's important sometimes to just take their take the airpods out of your ears and you know walk across grounds and say hi to people and allow open yourself up to engaging with somebody that you you come across their path on um and so I know, you know, we're all rocking AirPods and, and things like that. And but that that is a huge barrier sometimes to encountering people. Um, so I think the the risk of that is the temptation to always fill your life with things. And so occasionally it's good to, you know, open yourself up to the circumstances, the environment that is actually around you um, and to be able to, you know, hear the birds chirping or something along those lines. Um, so I, I think it's about a balance and trying to figure that you know, figure that out. But I think, you know, especially with college students and there's such an emphasis on, you know, as soon as you get out of class, you know, you pop in your AirPods so that you can get to the next point in, in your zone um, where it, it can encourage a certain type of isolation, which I think is risky in that sense. Nice. Father Bonaventure, you look like you're either seeing an apparition of the Blessed Virgin Mary or of your guardian angel or drawn to events outside your window by virtue of the fact that they have just constructed a four-story crane whereby to erect a five-story crane, and it goes on from there, or something else besides. Alert us to your interior states and also your thoughts about podcasts. Yeah, so first off, yeah, we are, the the statue of Mary in front of the House of Studies apparently is, is dangerously unstable and could, like, hurtle down and kill someone immediately. So we're replacing that. So get ready for that, folks. The other <laughs> thing is, when I was doing my dissertation, I was just reminding myself about this. I put on my wall my favorite picture. So I was doing it. There was some translation thing I was doing, and I threw it through like a, a, a translator to help out a little bit on something to check on things. And I got this out here. Wow. And it has awesome. So it's like the title there, Crucian Metaphors. 
mm-hmm. it just pulled up a weird like freedom it shows up random things and has deers on there and so when father joseph anthony was talking about something i just thought about deers um <laughs> podcasting let me see um uh what do i expect what do i want for podcasts um so that was a question before but i'm going back to that uh so yeah a uh, podcast are kind of the letting your hair down as father jacob Burton always says um uh <laughs> it's you know it's kind of the green room or the behind the scenes kind of stuff. it's we talk about serious things podcasts in my in my experience are generally talking about serious topics but in a kind of non-serious or le- less serious way it's not a lecture it's very different <clears throat> you're listening to lectures or books on tape or something like that it's more conversational but not is you listening in on a conversation of two people about a good topic and you know it's less prof- even though it, ha- it can have this level of performative aspect to it that you're trying to perform as not performing i think when podcasts are really good and the ones i, I like to listen to so like for instance uh glenn La- the glenn show glenn lowry and john mcwarder have a great podcast just spectacular and they're talking about racial issues and economic issues and they have great guests on there it was a lifesaver during uh during COVID and uh blm kind of stuff um but what's fa- fascinating about them is they're both two they're two very intelligent men who like each other they've been friends for a long time and they just have a conversational time with each other and tone. And uh, there's something free about that. And it makes serious things a little bit less serious and more approachable from different areas. And I don't feel like I need to tune out on ec- economic stuff. It feels like I can actually jump in and engage and listen to them. Now, you have to be careful. Of course, these are experts in different fields. And McWater's an expert in linguistics. But it's the kind of conversations you would have with smart people Um from different walks of life that all of us could engage in and that we're all able to more and more engage in. So I think that's the conversational education is nice. And Mm -hmm. also I listen to podcasts, I guess also to kind of hone the, to get better myself, to think about what podcasts, because I had no idea what podcasts were at all. No idea. Um, And so to listen to what it is expected in a podcast, because I remember the first year we were doing this, I'd always say, I don't know if we should do this or thing. And you would always say, that's a podcast that doesn't matter. It's totally fine if you do that, you know? Um, And I said, no idea, because I thought they were just kind of, I thought they were just like short lectures uh, that you Mm -hmm. gave as opposed to kind of freewheeling nonsense. Um, So that's the two (laughs) reasons why I listen to podcasts. Yeah. Just so you know, uh, listeners, I'd say like one out of every four times I record an episode with Father Bonaventure, he says, um, should we re-record that? Uh, and I typically say, no, nah, that's just how podcasts go. <laughs> but I think, I think you're right in the sense that like podcasts have this kind of way of being non-authoritative, authoritative or non-moralistic, moralistic, mm-hmm. because you listen to a podcast and you get to know these people and like what they love becomes what you love and what they hate becomes what you hate, not in a manipulative way or a kind of controlling way, but in a kind of para friendship way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like podcasts has, have a way by which of yeah, accompanying people through their lives uh, commending to people good things and steering people away from bad things, which I think is, is it can be powerful, you know, but there's something about it too, where I think it's important that they be like a little bit informal. I mean, I think that, that like the Gen X tendency is to like sit behind um, the news desk and read from a teleprompter. The millennial kind of tendency is like, nah, that's, that's wrong, but this should be coherent and we should get rid of likes, likes and ums, and we should kind of clean this up. So that way it's nice and tight. But the Gen Z tendency is let's just push record and I'm going to go get a little snack and then I'm going to eat it on camera. And then I might talk <laughs> about what I think in right now, like in five minutes. And so you can yeah. see there's a general tendency towards authenticity, as it were, sincerity or openness, vulnerability, transparency. And I think people want that because like, a younger generation is especially sensitive to anything that's false or artificial, put on or otherwise played up. And they just want to know who you are, the conversations in which you're participating. So that way they can get in and partake, you know, because I think that people want communion. And as friendship becomes harder and harder to host in the real world, I think people take a kind of solace and consolation in participating in pair of friendship. Um, so then it makes it all the more important to get people to come together in genuine community. So that way they can firm these up or flesh them out or whatever else it is. Get married. Um, So, all right, we're kind of coming to the end of our time. Maybe we can just do uh, like recommendations. It can be either recommend a podcast that you love or recommend a podcast consumption practice. uh, If you Mm -hmm. have a kind of cool prudence as to a podcast consumption practice. Uh, Father Jacob Birch, you want to go first? Yeah, um, I would, I would, I guess, go into the practice 
world or side yeah. of things. Um, I think that podcasts should be. Um, this is this is going to sound like a whatever typical me comment, but I think there's it's not just to like say something sarcastic. That podcasts <laughs> are kind of disposable in the sense that like you should listen to them for what you get out of them. So if you're looking for the you know for that sort of spiritual enrichment or entertainment or kind of Father Patrick, you mentioned some history podcasts. You know, if that's what you're looking for, then great. Pick them up, listen to them. But I don't, you know, but they, they serve a purpose. And I don't think like being loyal to a podcast, that's sort of, I don't know if that's that's the case. But I think they're they're helpful. And probably you can find better stuff out like in podcast world than like other kind of garbage media world. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I think like they're they're disposable in the best sort of way. Like they, they, they can serve they can serve your kind of what like needs for listening which i think is a great thing that's a helpful thing so yeah father joseph anthony um yeah recommendations so i i find that i engage with podcasts like i said when i'm driving most of the times and it it kind of mixes back and forth between entertainment and like professional development stuff so on the entertainment side um i i feel like so stereotypical i don't uh, yeah, I kind of enjoy true crime, true crime podcast. Like that's a real genre out there. So there's a few of those that I enjoy. Uh, Father Patrick mentioned Crime Town. I found that whole series. They have multiple seasons. I found that fascinating. Uh, there's another one, uh, Anatomy of a Murder, where they actually like break down all the circumstances that go into some of these um, interesting things. So that's on the true crime side. Um, I also like a lot of sports podcasts, and as we've mentioned before, I, I loved golf and I love golfing. So I listen a lot to the subpar podcast, which are two former golf professionals. Um, and they do some really cool interviews with different like caddies on tour and talk about the most recent tournament and some things coming up in that way. So I, there's a lot of golf podcasts I like, but I, I do enjoy the subpar podcast. Um, and then on the professional development side, uh, Father Patrick may have already mentioned this, but Pat Lencioni's uh, At the Table podcast. I really draw a lot from that. Uh, that one is one that I, I repeatedly go back to. He has it's it's short, punchy, and they have some really good nuggets for learning how to be a good leader in in the professional sector. And I've I've gained a lot of um, a lot of support from that podcast. So I would say At the Table is kind of my go to on the professional side of things. Nice. And if you search at the table, you might also find a Josh Garrell song by the same name, uh, also worth listening to. So also worth listening, yeah. It could be a source of many blessings in your life. Father Patrick, Recos. Sorry, I was just blasting Richmond, north of Richmond. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I think that uh, I think that a great podcast to just dive into, um, if you're a Catholic man, is the Catholic Man Show. Father Bonaventure mm -hmm. and I have uh, met up with those guys. Father Gregory, have they had you on? I have been on. Yep. I can't, can't remember others. Father Joseph Anthony, Father Jake Bird. They're working their way through us. Um, yeah, those... I, they've we've had them on. I know we've had them yes, on in the past. They've joined and us. And we've had those Pat Lencioni on as well. So keeping the, the uh, mutual support going through podcast world. Yeah, those guys are great. And that, that's what I really wanted to share with him. You know, one one thing I didn't expect from God's planning was to find this network of uh, fellow travelers mm -hmm. and uh, other Catholics that are up to great projects. And um, one person I uh, swap a lot of ideas around with is Katie McGrady. I think she she's wonderful. She's got an OSV podcast and a couple other projects. Um, so uh, so uh, to the friends we've made along the way. <laughs> oh so gosh, this is my parting <laughs> shot about podcasting. Dig, um, Father Bonaventure, refined thoughts unrefined thoughts, weird thoughts, unweird thoughts. Yeah, I was going to I was going to recommend the uh, Catholic Catholic Man show for for men. They're they're great. I'm sure there's a Catholic, is there a Catholic woman show? I guess like Be Given or something. It's called Abiding Together. Abiding Together, mm -hmm. right. Um that's that's out there too. So for the ladies amongst us. Um but I was also thinking the nice part of a podcast is you can listen in on a pr kind of a personal conversation that you wouldn't be privy to uh, unless the person knew you. So one of the things is you can listen to people that are from a different perspective from you or different side of things from you having personal conversations that you would not normally have access to because people would not be willing to talk openly with you in some ways. And I find that that helpful. Again, the, the Glenn show, I think is helpful for that because John McWhorter is, uh, he's, he's middle of the road guy, but he's different than, than Lowry and I'm different from both of them in a sense in multiple ways. Um, but you get to hear intelligent people from different sides speak about things and have real conversations. And that's that's nice because we're going we're going to have to have difficult and 
uh, yeah, interesting conversations with people that disagree with us a lot and just learning the tricks of the trade and listening to how people do that. And also hearing some things that might surprise you, uh, is, is good. So podcasts give you an opportunity to, to listen mm -hmm. in to intimate or personal conversations or real conversations with people that you otherwise would not have access to. And that's, that's beneficial. Yeah, I guess my, my final thought is that podcasts are also a kind of like proving ground for vocation, not in the sense that like important parts of your vocational development will take place in the context of a podcast, uh, but in the sense that like you learn through podcasting that it's fine to be weird, weird to a certain degree or extent, like you shouldn't like collect your toenail clippings and make jewelry out of them and like sell them at local markets. Um, but like it's if you're interested in this thing, you can explore this thing, you know, within the bounds of orthodoxy mm -hmm. and a happy, healthy Catholic life, like like in the podcasting podcasting space, there's a handful of podcasts which are for all comers and they're awesome. Um, and I'm sure they probably have like 75 percent of the market share, like, you know, the Father Mike Schmidt's podcasts, uh, of which I think there are four. And then the Word on Fire podcasts, of which there are mm -hmm. two. And it's like you come to discover pretty shortly in that, like from our vantage, you can't compete with those things because those guys are awesome and holy and smart and talented. And they're doing something that is great. And it's like God's planning will never be word on fire part two or Bible in a year, Bible in 364 days, because we talk a little faster. Um, you know, it's like, <laughs> like God's, God, God's planning is always going to be weird. It's always going to be Dominican. We're always going to have conversations that are going to cause people to scratch their heads and be like, what? but that's just, I, I, I don't even, you know, but it's like, as father Bonaventure once said, it's like sushi, you know, you have it one time and then you leave. And then a couple of days later, you're thinking like that sushi meal is really good. I think I might have sushi again, you know, go to the local Wegmans, get myself a 16 piece California mm. roll ooh, or spicy tuna. And, and, and I think that like a lot of our vocational lives kind of unfold in similar fashion. Father Jacob Burton's like, you just butcher the image and I hate you. Um, but like a lot of our vocational, sushi from um, Wegmans. Yeah, dude, yeah, Wegmans has great too? sushi. No, yeah. I'm, I'm a stand by that. I'm a big Wegmans sushi guy. You're from West got Virginia. You. They got you a Weggies down here. Look, it's if you want good. trashy, if you want trashy Wegmans sushi, Weg Wegmans is the way to go. If you want trashy <laughs> sushi, Wegmans is awesome. I love, I love Wegmans <laughs> okay, sushi, let's... man. Now I, I might the... just go hit that up right now. To be quite honest, once we finish this up, mm. that's a great call. Thanks. Mm. I'll join you. We'll meet halfway. Yeah. Just an hour. Spicy tuna. That's where it's send him, send him sushi. In the mail. Yes. <laughs> Send him sushi through the mail with cane toads. Uh, cane toads bearing sushi. Um, but but in, in like kind of give an expression to the weird interest that you have, you'll come to find fellow travelers. You'll come to find people with whom you can spend your life. You'll come to find a place in which you fit. And I think that um, there's something cool about participating in conversations which give kind of expression to that or give scope for that. I think that's a kind of muddled thought, and I'm not entirely sure that I expressed it well. But I think there's something cool about podcast as niche or podcast as like small town community or podcast as place where I congregate and where I host a conversation that other people are delighted to participate in because they haven't found it elsewhere. Um, so I think that uh, that reflects something of the diversity of the mystical body. And I get excited about that. All right. I think any final thoughts thing, before? Yeah, go I got one last thing. One podcast that none of us have mentioned yet, but it's on that same vein of like the diversity, of the the body of Christ in this sense is uh, the Poco Poco podcast. Like yeah, we boy. love the Poco boys. It's so fun to like watch their uh, Franciscan charism come out in in real display. And it is different than our Dominican charism, but I love watching watching that. I oddly enough, I consume Poco mostly on YouTube. Um, so like, yeah, I'll watch their podcast a lot, but I think that's another podcast that I'd, I'd love to throw out there is like, these are great guys doing exactly what you said, that kind of unique aspect of their spirituality, but it's really on display and they, they have a great, uh, dynamic and fraternity amongst each other. Boom. Any other final thoughts? No. All right. Well, if you're looking for a podcast about female entrepreneurship, <laughs> Impact Go is the podcast for you. Italian. Uh, but short of that, maybe, maybe you can stick with God's planning and we'd be delighted to accompany you along the way as we go to God together. So thanks as always for listening to God's planning. Please follow us on Facebook, X, and Instagram. If you would, in your generosity and the kindness of your heart, like the episode, subscribe on YouTube or your podcast app and leave a five-star review. We'd appreciate it. And then if you'd like to donate to the podcast through Patreon, you can do so by following the link in the description or show notes. In that same description or show notes, you'll find links for merchandise. 
And for upcoming Godsplaining events, we got a day of recollection coming up in New York City on October 19th at our parish there in Greenwich Village, St. Joseph's. So it's going to be sweet. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be swassome. No, I can't come up with a compound word there. It doesn't All right. No of our prayers for you. Please pray for us, and we'll look forward to chatting with you next time on Godsplaining. Father Bonaventure. If you had to choose between getting Warby Parker glasses, subscribing to a YouTube channel, or flossing your teeth, what would you choose? Oof. I guess, to be honest, subscribing to a YouTube channel. <laughs> See, folks, it's not as bad as flossing your teeth or getting Warby Parker glasses. Please subscribe to God's Planning. Cheers. <laughs>